He was one of the greatest medieval rulers who laid the foundations of French and German cultures. He united Western Europe for the first time since the fall of the Western Roman Empire. Here are a few facts you didn't know about Charlemagne. When his father Pepin the Short died, he split his kingdom in two parts, one ruled by Charlemagne and the other by his brother Carloman. By this move, Pepin thought the brothers were forced to cooperate and would choose brotherhood over hunger for power. But it was known that the brothers were big rivals and after Carloman's sudden death in 771, Charlemagne became the sole ruler of the Frankish kingdom. Although he enjoyed food, he rarely arranged feasts and he did not tolerate drinking, so he hated when people surrounding him were drinking. His daily meal consisted of his favorite food, which was roast meat. While having lunch, he listened to musical readings, mostly about history and brave heroes of the past. He started hating doctors at his older age when they said he should give up grilled food. He had four wives and many children. Some sources say he fathered as many as 18, though most of them were illegitimate. He was a devoted father who allegedly loved his daughters so much that he prohibited them to marry while he was alive. His oldest son was Pepin, whom he had with a Frankish noblewoman Himmeltrude. Pepin had a curved spine, kyphosis, leading many medieval historians to give him an epithet, hunchback. He lived at Charlemagne's court even after he dismissed his mother and took another wife. When Pepin the Hunchback led a failed revolt against Charlemagne, he was disinherited and exiled to a monastery in Prome. His place was taken by his younger brother Louis, who will have pushed the Muslims from northern Spain sometime after Charlemagne's death. He was a severe supporter of education and spurned the Carolingian Renaissance, the first European cultural activity during which there was an increase in literature, writing, art, architecture and much more. This is ironical because he himself did not know how to read or write. There is a whole biography about him called The Life of Charlemagne, written by Einhard, his courtier, who had access to all court annals and was present at all important events in Charlemagne's life. The Life of Charlemagne, or Vita Caroli Magni, is one of the most precious literary bequests of the early Middle Ages. Einhard's work provides us with many anecdotes and direct information about Charlemagne's life and his character. When Charlemagne conquered pagan Saxony, he ordered the execution of 4,500 Saxon prisoners, also known as the Massacre of Werden. The killings triggered three years of bloody warfare. The war ended with the Saxon leader Widukind accepting baptism. That wasn't enough for him. In 792 and in 804 new rebellions occurred when the Saxon people once again rose up in revolt against Charlemagne's reign. Both of those rebellions failed and Saxony was finally subdued and Christianized. Joyeuse was Charlemagne's personal sword. Joyeuse means, well, joyous. Legends claim that this sword's hilt contained a part of the lance of Longinus, the spear with which Jesus was pierced as he hung on the cross. There is a French town today called Joyeuse and it was named by a Frankish knight who retrieved the sword Joyeuse after it was lost in battle. The sword was used to crown various French monarchs all up until the French Revolution in 1793 when it was moved to Louvre, Paris, where it is still displayed today. Towards the end of his life in 813, broken by illness and old age, he decreed that his son Louis, the King of Aquitaine, was the heir to the imperial title and would take over once he dies. He spent his last winter hunting, but was struck with a high fever from which he could not recover. He died on the 28th of January 814 and was buried in the Aachen Cathedral in Western Germany. What do you think about our pick? Did we say something wrong? Subscribe to Photo and Feast for more videos like this and leave a comment saying what would you like to see next. Until next time, goodbye.